Dobro jutro, dobro dan, MKS. Želim vsem poverati veseli praznike za dan reformacije. Smo imeli res čudovit vreme, ta vikend, in je fajn, če lahko tudi na tak način se malo povezujemo, kljub tomu, da se ne moramo zbirati v živo, ampak imamo priložnosti, da preko teh fantastično socialne v mreži, da se lahko se malo vidimo in slišimo. Bi rad danes povedal nekaj stvari o reformaciji, ki mislim, da je pomembno in bom kar zdaj prišal tu v angliščino, da bi malo lažji in bar bi bo še pomagala pri prevajanju. Torej, gremo naprej. This nation owes a great deal to the spirit of revival and renewal, that drove men like Luther, Primoš Truber and Yuri Dalmatin. Ta narod veliko dobuje Božjemu duhu prebojenja in prenovljenja, ki je gnal može, kot so Martin Luther, Primoš Truber in Yuri Dalmatin. In this drive was fueled by their pursuit of truth. In gnala jih je v bistvu to prizadevanje, gnalo jih je prizadevanje za resnico. Truber's creation of the alphabet, Trubareva stvaritev abecede in Dalmatin's translation of the New Testament in Dalmatinov prevod nove zaveze came as a result of Luther's act that sparked the Reformation. In nastalo kot posledica Luterovega delovanja, ki je vžgalo reformacijo. In October 31, 1517, Martin Luther pinned 95 theses to the door of the church. In 31. oktobra 1517 in Martin Luther pribil 95 tez. Statements against the selling of indulgences and other practices not supported by the Bible. 95 tez raznih izjav proti prodaju odpustkov in drugim stvarim, ki niso bile nekako del svetega pisma. And this act is now considered the spark that began the Reformation. In to dejanje je bilo tisto, ko je pribil te teze, ki je vžgalo reformacijo. I know the reformation is a broad subject. Vem, da je reformacija sicer precej obširna tema. But what was accomplished? Ampak kaj se je takrat dovršilo? And what do we celebrate today? In kaj danes praznujemo? I want to point out three things that I believe are very important. Red bi pozornost usmeril na tri stvari, za katere jaz menim, da so pomembne. First of all, the Reformation was a release from ignorance. Najprej, Reformacija je bila osvoboditev iz nevednosti. See, Luther championed the cause to get the Bible into the German language. Luther je nevijel za to, da bi sveto pismo prevedli v nemščino. So that both the king and the farmer could understand it. Zato, da bi jo lahko tako kralj, kakor kmet, lahko razumela. And he argued that the scripture was the ultimate and final authority in all matters of doctrine, church practices and living. In dokazoval je, da je Božja beseda končna in edina avtoriteta na vse stvari, kar se tiče naprimer doktrine ali pa raznih crkvenih praks. Luther said, what is asserted without the scripture may be held as an opinion, but need not be believed. Luther je rekel, da tiste stvari, ki se trdijo, na primer, brez Božje besede, se jih lahko smatra kot promnenje, ni pa potrebno jih spreti kot del verovanja. And when Gutenberg's printing presses got a hold of Luther's writings, in ko je Gutenbergova tiskarna dobila Luterova dela, including the Bible, vključno z prevodom Svetega pisma, the common person, je potem običajna oseba, not just the priest, ne samo duhovnik, could read and understand God's word. Lahko brala in razumela Božjo besedo. The scriptures and its preaching, Božja beseda in oznanjevanje lete delivered the masses from their ignorance je osvobajala množice iz njihove nevednosti so that they could believe the gospel zato da so lahko verjeli evangeliju and develop their own personal relationship with God in razvili svoj osebni odnos z Bogom. But ignorance is not only a problem of the Middle Ages. Ampak nevednost ni bila le problem srednjega veka. When literacy rates barely reached 10%. Ko je bila pismenost, naprimer, 
skoraj da deset procenta. Ignorance is epidemic right now. Nevednost je ima epidemične epidemično narav pravno v tem času tudi. Yeah, the beginning of the 21st century. Sedaj, v 20. stoletju. And what a paradox. In kakšen paradox. Since we are living in the so-called information age. Ker sedaj živimo v tako imenovani informacijski dobi. But the Bible says that you and I also lived in ignorance. Ampak sveto pismo pravi, da sva tako jaz kot ti živela včasih v nevednosti. What kind of ignorance? Kakšni nevednosti? Listen to what Peter says in his first book in chapter 1 verse 14. Poslušajte, kaj Peter pravi v svojem prvem pismu, v prvem poglavju v 14. vrstici. He says, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Kot otroci poslušnosti se ne prilagajate prejšnjim željam, ki ste jih imeli v svoji nevednosti. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Mar več budite v vsem ravnanju tudi sami sveti, Kakor je svet tisti, ki vas je poklical, saj je pisano, budite sveti, ker sem jaz svet. Ignorance is used to describe a way of life before we came to Christ and believed in Him. In nevedno se opisuje kot način življenja, ki smo ga imeli, predno smo ozverovali v Kristusa. Whenever you take God out of any equation, there comes chaos. In kakorkoli vzamaš Boga iz kakršnekoli situacije, se ustvarja kaos. He's the glue that holds all things together. On je ta lepilo, ki drži vse stvari skupaj. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18, it says it this way. In Vefežani 4, 18, oziroma 17 pravi takole. This I say therefore, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind. Zato vam pravim in vas rutim v gospodu, ne živite več, kakor živijo pogani, v ničevosti svojega uma. Being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God. Zaradi nevednosti, ki je v njih, in zaradi trdote njihovega srca, because of the ignorance that is in them. Jim je razum otemnel in so se odstojili Božjemu življenju. Because of the hardness of their heart, and they, having become callous, having given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Ko so tako utopeli, so se prepustili razozdanosti, da so z nenasitnim pohlepom počenjali vsakršne nečistosti. And I love this phrase. In všeč mi je ta fraza. But you did not learn Christ in this way. Vi ne pa se niste tako učili Kristusa. See, Paul points out that we were excluded from the life of God because of our ignorance. Pavel nam pove, da v bistvu smo bili nekako izključeni z tega življenja z Bogom zaradi naše lastne nevednosti. And the key to experiencing the life of God is receiving God's truth. In ključ, da izkusimo Bože življenje, je ta, da sprejmemo vse. Božjo resnico. His revelation that brings light. Njegovo razudetje nas razsvetljuje. And gives a person the ability to be able to connect with him. In da osebi možnost, da se lahko poveže z njim. Ignorance is the absence of truth in one's life. Nevednost je odsotnost resnice v življenju posameznika. It is the absence of Christ living in our heart je odsotnost Kristusa, ki prebiva v nas. But when Christ is living in our life, he's living in our heart, ko Kristus prebiva v nas, it produces purity and holiness, a way of life. Ko privede do življenja čistosti, svetosti, do načina življenja. And while some of us have experienced the truth that has liberated us, in ko smo sicer nekateri izkusili to resnico, ki nas je osvobodila, from that bondage of ignorance, not knowing, iz te nevednosti, iz te zvezanosti, iz nevednostjo, ko pač nečesa nismo vedeli. Most of Slovenija, despite its great learning, 
still lives in this ignorance. And while the nation celebrates the day of reformation, a release from ignorance, in reality, we're still in bondage to it. The, the sensuality or the sexual immorality, the greed, the witchcraft and all kinds of various mm-hmm. uh, that continues to fill and be practiced in this nation is a sign of her not being in freedom. It's the evidence of her bondage. In Slovenia's true hope for a stable and for a peaceful and bright future don't lie in its government's policies or its political parties but the only thing that will challenge the perversion and the corruption in the heart is what challenged it four centuries ago. The Word of God and the preaching of the Gospel. Listen to Peter again. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have a sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again. Not of not a perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. And then Peter says, And this is the word that was preached to you. There's a great battle for truth going on in our culture right now. And the key element in that battle is the, is the content of the Word of God. And we celebrate the fact that God has clearly communicated His truth. And just as Truber loved the Word of God, and how passionate he was to have it in the Slovene language, so that every Slovene could read it for themselves, to have their minds enlightened by the truth, to give them the power to turn away from sin and turn toward God. And experience the understanding of knowing why they have life. Secondly, the the Reformation was a release from dead works. One of the great statements that has come from the Reformation and there are many but one of the key ones is justification by faith. Luther understood that there was nothing he could do to earn his salvation. 
Luter je razumel, da ni ničesar, kar bi lahko storil sam od sebe, da bi si zaslužil odrešenje. And freedom from his sense of personal guilt. In to svobodo od te osebne krivde. The Catholic Church during that day Katoliška cerkva tistega časa made knowing God and escape from a personal guilt almost an impossible task. Je storila, da bi bilo spoznanje Boga in izhod iz teh mrtvih del skoraj nemogoča situacija. Including paying indulgences. Na primer, tudi uh, se to plačevanje uh, odpustkov. Doing penance. Pokor, opravljanje pokore. And obeying the Pope. In slepo oboganje poslušnost papežu. Even when he himself lived in perversion and corruption. Ki je tudi sam v tistem času živel s prevrženo življenje in bil skorumpiran. And it was common at that time for the people to belittle Rome. In zelo običajno je bilo v tistem času, da so ljudje kritizirali in njegovo zlorabo moči in bogatstva. They said, if, if there is a hell, then Rome is in, built on it. Govorili so, če obstaja pekel, potem je Rim zgrajen na njem. Luther became increasingly intolerant of those abuses. In Luther je postavil če dalje bolj netoleranten do takšnih vrzlorab. Not until he studied the book of Romans, in ko je uh, preučeval pismo Rimljano, did he find the answer his soul was looking for? Je našel odgovor, katerega je njegova duša tako iskala. And the convicting verse was in Romans 1, 16 and 17. Vrstica, ki ga je nekako prepričala, je izhajala iz uh, pisma Rimljano 1, 16 do 7. Which says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of anyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith. V njem v evangeliju se namreč razodeva Božja pravičnost iz vere v vero, kako je zapisano. The righteous will live by faith. Pravični bo živel iz vere. To use Luther's words, in če uporabimo Luterove besede, he said it is a sweet exchange between Christ and the sinner. To je čudovita sladka izmenjava med Kristusom in med grešnikom. He said, and I quote, on je rekel, to je, you, you, Lord Jesus, are my righteousness. Ti, Gospod Jezus, si moja pravičnost. And I am your sin. Jaz pa sem tvoj greh. You have taken on yourself what you were not. Nase si vzel to, kar ti sam nisi bil. And have given me what I am not. In dal si mi to, kar jaz nisem. And this exchange In ta izmenjava is simple but very costly. Je zelo preprosta, ampak veliko stane. Faith in the death and resurrection of Christ Vera v smrt in ustajenje Jezusa Kristusa causes the exchange of my sin and personal guilt for his freedom and righteousness. Povzruči to izmenjavo mojega greha in moje obsodbe za njegovo svobodo in njegovo pravičnost. Wow, that is fantastic news. In to je čudovita novica. What an unbelievable exchange. Takšna neverjetna izmenjava. That is why Romans 8.1 says in, in zato Rimljani 8.1 pravi where a believer can confidently say ko lahko vernik z gotovostjo reče in trdi there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Zdaj ni torej nobene obsodbe za tiste, ki so v Kristusu Jezusu. Paul in another letter in Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 Pavel še v drugem pismu, Efežanom 8 do 9 pravi puts this so beautifully. Tako čudovito to izrazi. He says, it is by grace you have been saved. Z milostjo ste namreč odrešeni po veri. Through faith, and this is not from yourselves. In to ni iz vas. It is a gift of God. Ampak je Božji dar. Not by works. Niste odrešeni z del. So that no one can boast. Da se ne bi kdo hvalil. It is very fitting and symbolic that today, in this zelo, Sunday, November 1st, no one works. Primerno je, da to nedeljo, recimo 1. novembra, nišče ne dela. It is symbolic in order that we can rest and enjoy the fruits of what Christ has done on our behalf. Simbolno je v tej meri, da lahko uživamo uh, 
da, da lahko ne delamo in uživamo v darovih, ki nam jih je dal Bog. In another letter to Titus, in chapter 3, in v drugem pismu Titu, tretje poglavje, Paul says it this way. Pavel pravi to na tak način. At one time we too were foolish. Saj smo bili tudi mi na poč na umni. Disobedient. Nepokorni. Deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. In v zabludah stregli smo najrazličnejšim poželenjem in nasladam. We lived in malice and envy being hated and hating one another. Živeli smo v hudobi in neviščljivosti. Neznosni smo bili in sovražili drug drugega. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, Ko pa sta se pojavili dobrota in človekoljubnost Boga, našega odrešenika. He saved us. Nas je rešil. Not because of righteous things we had done. A ne zaradi del pravičnosti, ki bi jih storili mi. But because of his mercy. Mar več po svojem usmiljenju. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Skopeljo prerojenja in prenovitve po svetem duhu. Renewal by the Holy Spirit. Prenovitve po svetem duhu. Renewal by the Holy Spirit. Prenovitve po svetem duhu. Whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. Tega, tega svetega duha je po našem odrešeniku Jezusu Kristusu obilno izliv na nas. So that having been justified by his grace. Da bi opravičeni po njegovi milosti, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Ostali dediči večnega življenja, v katero upamo. You see, it is pride that thinks that we have something to offer God for our salvation. Ponos je ta, ki misli, da lahko nekaj ponudimo Bogu za naše odrešenje. But it's humility that recognizes that we have nothing to offer. Vendar je ponižnost tista, ki prepoznava, da mu nimamo ničesar za ponuditi. We simply stand in need of his grace. Enostavno uh, lahko priznamo, da stojimo v potrebi po njegovi milosti. See, it was our work that got us into trouble. A ne, naša dela so bila tista, ki so nas spravila v težavo. And, and God decided that it would be... <laughs> our ability to trust what he does on our behalf. In Bog se odločil, da... Yeah, God decided that it would be that it would be our ability to be able to trust him for what he does for us. In Bog se odločil, da raje zaupamo v to, kar on lahko stori za nas. That he would reconcile us to himself. Da je on ta, ki nas lahko spravi samim seboj. Well, Luther said it like this. Pravzaprav, Luther je to rekel takole. God creates out of nothing. Bog ustvarja iz ničar. Therefore, Torej, until a person is nothing, dokler oseba ne postane nič, God can make nothing out of him. Bog ne more nič storiti iz nega, oziroma ničesar. When you get up this morning, Ko si danes, jutraj vstal, you probably remember that you are free from work. Si se verjetno spomnil, o, danes mi ni treba delat. <laughs> remember something else that you are free from. Ampak spomni se še, še, se še tega, od česar si zares svoboden. By faith you have been justified. Po veri si bil opravičen. And if you are justified, in če si opravičen, then you have faith or peace with God. Potem imaš mir z Bogom. Through Jesus Christ. Preko Jezusa Kristusa. You can't do anything for it. Ne, ne moreš ničesar storiti za to. You can't work to get it. Ne moreš se truditi za to. It's a matter of trust. To je samo stvar zaupanja in vere. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Zaupaj gospoda z vsem svojim srcem. It is faith alone that saves. Vera sama je tista, ki odrešuje. But a faith that saves is never alone. Ampak vera, ki odrešuje, ni nikoli sama. Good works are the result of our believing. Bo, dobra dela so posledica našega verovanja. They are, are not the path to believing. Niso pot k verovanju. The third thing that's important in tretja stvar, ki je pomembna, is that the Reformation was a release from countless mediators. Da je reformacija bila osvobodita od neštetih raznoraznih posrednikov. And I believe one of the great fruits of the recovery of truth was the rediscovery of a personal relationship with God. In verjamem, da ene izmed največjih sadov 
te ponovno obnovljene resnice je bilo odkritje tega osebnega odnosa z Bogom, ki ga lahko imamo. In the ignorance of scripture which led to various abuses like indulgences. In nevednost glede Božje besede, ki nas je vodila, ki je vodila ljudi do razno raznih zlorab, kot na primer uh, prodaj odpustkov. They kept people from him. Vse to je držalo ljudi proč od Boga. Peter says it this way in chapter 3 verse 18 of his first book. Peter pravi v prvi Petrovom pismu 3:18. Makes this wonderful statement. Da to čudovito izjavo. For Christ also suffered once for sins. Sicer pa je tudi Kristus trpel zaradi grehov. The just for the unjust. Sicer pa je tudi Kristus trpel zaradi grehov in sicer enkrat za vselej. Pravični za krivične. That he might bring us to God. Da bi vas pripeljal k Bogu. That he might bring us to God. Da bi nas lahko pripeljal k Bogu. That was the point of his suffering. To je bil smisel njegovega trpljenja. This was the mediation the Son of God did on the cross. To je bilo to posredništvo, ki ga je Božji Sin storil za nas, in our own sinful state, we didn't našem, have access to him. Stanju, God doesn't fellowship with sin. Bog se ne druži za but through Jesus' own death and Ampak the spilling of his own blood, preko Kristusa, preko krvi, which erases or forgives our sins, odpušča vse naše grehe in se jih ne spominja več. Gives us the ability then to be personally introduced to the Father. Vse to nam daje sposobnost, da smo lahko osebno predstavljeni nebeškem očetu. It creates a state where the Son can take us by the hand and lead us to the Father. To ustvarja tako sliko, ko nas Sin prime za roko in nas odvede k očetu. As Jesus himself said, no one can come to the Father except through me. Kakor je Jezus sam rekel, nihče ne pride k očetu, kakor po meni, razen po meni. Paul says elsewhere that there is no mediator between God and man. Pavel je rekel še nekje drge, da ni posrednika med Bogom in človekom. The man Christ Jesus. Samo Kristus Jezus. And this he states in his letter to Timothy. In to pove v prvem uh, pismu Timoteju 2, 5 do 6. Where he says, In pravi, Bog je namreč samo eden. Samo eden je tudi srednik med Bogom in ljudmi. Človek Kristus Jezus. On, ki je sam sebe dal odkupnino za vse. Wow. And the effect of this mediation <laughs> is so complete in posledica tega posredništva je tako popolna that we can now call him dad. Da ga mi sedaj lahko imenujemo oče. According to Paul, v skladu za Pavlom, he puts the spirit of his son in us. Pravi, da je on položil duha svojega sina v nas. So that we can cry out, zato da lahko mi kličemo, Abba Father. Abba Očka. Once this relationship is established, in ko smo ustanovili, postavili ta odnos, we can relate to the Father in the same way Jesus did. Imamo lahko tak odnos z nebeškim očetom, kakor ga je imel Jezus. In this sense, Jesus isn't the only son in, that God has. In v tem smislu potem Jezus ni edini sin, katerega ima Bog. I know that almost sounds like heresy. Vem, da to zveni skoraj, da kakor herezija. But we have to let the Bible Ampak inform us. Moramo dovoliti, da nas sveto pismo informira. It has to tra- transcend even some of our cultural in, understandings. In to mora presešti tudi ne, nekatera naša kulturna uh, prepričanja. Paul says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 26. Pavel pravi v Galečani 3.26. For by faith you have all become God's sons. Vi vsi ste namreč poveri v Kristusa Jezusa, Božji sinovi. So what Jesus was by nature, torej, kar je bil Jezus sam po naravi, we have become through grace. Smo mi postali po milosti, El, poveri. Elsewhere it says that we are adopted sons. Nekje druge piše, da smo posinovljeni, posvojeni otroci. But we are no less sons. Ampak tudi posvojen otrok 
ni nič manj vreden od biološkega otroka. This is, a, this is an amazing truth. In to je neverjetna resnica. And it affects our identity. In to vpliva na našo identiteto. Irregardless of what my natural circumstances may have been. Ne glede na moje naravne okoliščine. As a man or as a woman, kot moški ali kot ženska, we can know God as our Father. Lahko spoznamo in poznamo Boga kot našega očeta. And I become His Son. In jaz potem postanem njegov sin. Barbara became his daughter. Barbara postane njegova hči. And it's that relationship that empowers us. In to ravno ta odnos je ta, ki nas opremlja z močjo. To be able to live out the purpose and the reason for our existence. In nam daje moč, da živimo in da uh, nam daje razlog za naš obstoj in nam daje namen. I want to bless you today. Danes vas želim blagosloviti. And I want to end this message just by praying. In želim uh, zaključiti to sporočilo z molitvi. And I want us to believe together for a new reformation and renewal in our nation. In želim da skupaj verjamemo za novo prebujenje, novo prenovljenje oziroma novo reformacijo v tem narodu. The battle for truth is still on. Bitka za resnico se še vedno odvija. And all of us play a vital role. In vsak izmed nas ima ključno vlogo. In both living the truth, v tem, da sami živimo but to also resnico, proclaiming the truth. Pa da tudi oznanjamo to resnico. In the way that the truth brought dramatic changes many centuries ago. In način, kako je ta resnica uh, privedla do mnogih dramatičnih sprememb mnogo stoletij nazaj. God's truth still has the ability to bring change. Ima Božja resnica še vedno sposobnost, da prinaša spremembo. And I want us to pray for a, a release from ignorance. In želim, da skupaj molimo za osvoboditev od nevednosti. For a release from dead work, <coughs> from religion. Oziroma sprostitve od mrtvih del, ali kakršne koli religije. And a new release of personal In, encounters with Christ. In novo sprostitev v to, da imamo lahko oseben odnos, osebno srečanje Za that lead people to the Father. In to srečenje z Jezusom vodi ljudi do nebeškega očeta. Slovenija had a reformation. Slovenija je imela reformacijo. And Slovenija needs a reformation. In Slovenija še vedno potrebuje reformacijo. Father, I thank you for this day. Oče, hvala ti za današnji dan. I thank you for the privilege of living in a country. Hvala ti za ta privilegij, da lahko živimo v deželi, that celebrates the Reformation as a national holiday. Ki preznuje reformacijo kot državni praznik. I thank you for the impact of men like Primo Štruber and Juri Dalmatin. Hvala ti za vpliv mož, kot so bili Primo Štruber, Juri Dalmatin in drugi. Who left an indelible mark. Ki so pustili pečat. Very clear footprints. Jasne sledi. They left a posterity through their writings. In pustili so nam pisma, razna svoja dela preko uh, literature. That has impacted the development of this nation. Vse to, kar je, kar je vplivalo na razvoj tega naroda. And Father, we ask you this morning. In oče, mi te prosimo v tem jutru. For a new reformation in this nation. Za novo reformacijo v tem narodu. We know that there's a battle for truth. Zavedamo se, da obstaja bitka za resnico. And your word is truth. In tvoja beseda je resnica. In fact, truth is a person. Pravzaprav, resnica je oseba. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Kako je rekel Jezus, jaz sem pot, resnica in življenje. We pray that there would be a new attraction to the truth. In molimo, da bi bili ljudje na novo pritegneni k tej resnici. And just as hearts and lives responded to the proclamation of the truth in Truber's day. In kakor so se srca ljudi odzvala na oznanjevanje resnice v Truberjevih časih. Lord, we ask that there would be a response in our day. Gospod, mi prosimo, da bi bil zil tudi v današnjem času. That the Holy Spirit would draw people to himself. Da bi Sveti Duh pritegnil ljudi k sebi. That people would experience a personal encounter. Da bi ljudje izkusili osebno srečanje. Drawing them out of, 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 of understanding and, and a way of life that is... Potegne ven iz razumevanja oziroma načina življenja, ki... That is less than satisfying. Ki... Bring them to an encounter with you. 
privedi ih do srečanja s teboj to cover their sins in pokri njihove grehe to turn their hearts from darkness to light obrni njihova srca iz teme v svetlobo to open the potential that they would understand their reason for existence and they could live out God's will for their life. Father, we thank you for this nation. We thank you for our leadership. We pray for our government. For those who lead. We ask that you'd pour out wisdom upon them. We pray for your favor upon this nation. That we could all live in, in peace and in dignity. That there would remain an openness for the preaching of the gospel. And that there would be a new wave of people responding to your truth. Father, we bless this nation. We thank you for the Church of Jesus Christ and for every individual who loves you and loves the truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Such 